all right, I am now the biggest Love is Blind fanboy out there. I didn't want to be. A friend of mine said, you need to watch this show. I was reluctant. Finally, I watched, I just watched like half of the first episode, and I was totally hooked. Just seeing these people, like the 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 amount of emotional valence I thought was fascinating, and so I'm all in. If you haven't seen the show, sort of the, the, the high-level overview is you have these single people that all want to be in relationships, and they're forced to date through a wall. They can't see each other. And at the end of, I think it's a week-long period, they have to propose. They propose to this one person, and then they're taken out of these pods, and they actually have to go and live together for a month and decide, do we want to get married? And then at the very last episode, they go to the altar, and they have to both say, I do, or one of them says, I don't, and it's over. Fantastic show on Netflix. You should watch it. Okay, in this video, I want to talk about the underlying premise, Is Love Blind? Look, the show is fantastic. It's entertaining, engaging, and I think it has a noble a noble message that you know this idea that love is blind and the producers know exactly what they are doing they are playing on every psychological mechanism that drives people to be in relationships there was a really important article that came out last year in the journal of personality and social psychology that reviewed the research that's been done in uh, you know about relationships and the in the data is overwhelming in order for us to be in relationships most people make really bad decisions over and over and over again. We, we, we engage with people that don't meet our kind of baseline criteria. Once we're in relationships, we move way too quickly. We attach way too quickly. And then whether or not it's, it's just bad or even abusive, we really struggle to get out of the relationship. And the reason for these bad decisions is, is both evolutionary and, and social. The evolutionary piece is, is interesting and I think clear. It is strategically a better approach to engage with people that almost meet your expectations, just as long as you are removing people from your prospective pool of mates that are awful or terrible. If you ask somebody, there's, this study was actually done, you ask a bunch of people that are in college, what do you want your mate to look like, act like, what characteristics do you want them to have? And people will have a very specific list. And then if you give them somebody that that wants to partner with them that doesn't meet their initial criteria list, people are very, very compromising. Because what's happening behind the scenes is there's scarcity. And you don't know if you're going to be able to partner with this person or the next person or the next person. If you say no to too many people, you may run out of partners. So there is this drive to just pick someone that is, that's good enough. If you ask my wife what did she want in her, you know, in her partner, she may have said, I want him to have a full head of hair. I want him to be you know, six feet tall, I want, right, she may have had her criteria, but she probably put up with me because I thought I was good enough, and then we dated, I was charming, and the rest is, she, she, I mean, she compromised. We all do that. You kind of have to do that because there's no one that's perfect out there. So this show plays on that by, by essentially saying you only have 10 potential mates, right? By putting them in, the, in these pods, by putting them in this experiment, their, their minds are closed to what the, what the rest of the world looks like. So you have this group of people that engaged in this study because they've been unsuccessful at love so far, so they're already a little bit anxious. Then they put them in these pods, which ramps up the anxiety about there not being somebody else out there. The second thing is they give a very short time frame. You have one week to pick someone in these pods, and then you go out and you date them, and then you only have one more month to decide, is this going to work? I don't know why anybody doesn't just go like, hold on. I like you. I'm not going to make this decision in a month. Let's just keep dating for six months or nine months or maybe a full year. And then we'll decide if we want to get married. They just have compressed their time frame, which pushes people under pressure to make more bad decisions. So that's the evolutionary side of things. On the social side, there's a lot going on. You have cameras in your face. You have oh, this whole system has been set up pushing you to get into these relationships, right? Like, like, like imagine when you were in high school, there was pressure to partner up. The cool kids had their person, and, and there was a drive to sort of engage in that. This has takes that exact same sort of pressure cooker and amplified it times a thousand because not only are you making a show, but you're interacting with people whose whole focus is to be in relationships. So if you want to be one of the successful people that were in these pods, you're one of the ones that finds a partner. So there's this massive drive 
to be in those relationships. And then once you start the relationship, once you make that proposal and you head off to Mexico for your, you know, your your Netflix sanctioned honeymoon, again, there was this pressure to engage in the process and, and, and be successful. So people are putting up with pressure and drama and, and stress that they would never, if they were thinking objectively, submit themselves to. And if you say no, if you say you're done with it, you're disappointing your partner, you're disappointing the fans, you're disappointing the producers. Like there's so much that goes into putting this on to bail on it early looks really bad. So when you keep these psychological mechanisms in mind, and then you watch the season, it's amazing how many objectively bad decisions were made. So I don't know what value to put on all of that. Like, I don't know if it's a bad thing or a good thing. I just think it, it is how we are. We are driven to progress our relationships. It's the reason that, that people over the age of 25 in the U.S., about 80% of them have been married. We are driven to be in relationships. So here's my plan as it relates to Love is Wine. I have, I have so much to say. I will do a new video every day this week about a different couple or person that I thought was particularly notable or interesting. The first one will be on Shake and Deep D. You know, Shake is so freaking nuts. He is the picture perfect narcissist. I will link that video or the playlist here, which you can click through to, to watch that. Also, you should hit the notification bell so when new videos come out, uh, you'll be notified. Thank you so much for listening. Like, subscribe all those YouTube things. Thanks.